What's going on guys? Welcome to part two with the Simic Ramp uh, Ugin deck. Really, really enjoying this one so far. We've done pretty well with it as well. Uh, if you haven't checked out the first video, please do so. Uh, I think um, I think it speaks for itself, the, the power level of the deck. So it's really exciting to try this one. Uh, great to be playing back with Ugin the Spirit Dragon after all this time since it was I think. Uh, was when it was first uh, released. Um, oh, and I need to... There we go. All right. Uh, yes. So do we keep this? Um, you know, it's a bit of a sketchy keep, but I'm going to try it based on gross viral and the fact that we just have so many lands in this deck. Uh, I feel like we at least have a shot here. So we'll see. Um, it is a bit of a risky one, though. Obviously, if we don't hit our third and fourth land, we're in bad shape. Uh, unfortunately, that doesn't necessarily help us though that is good uh we didn't necessarily have to play it that turn um we certainly could have waited but uh, it doesn't matter too much i don't believe uh we don't really have any interaction so to speak yet so uh if we can get to the ugin we can sweep and then we're in amazing shape so uh let's just go ahead and play this we'll throw that on the bottom uh and we'll go ahead and play this now uh happy to take a land here Again, we do need a land, and this does get us to Nyssa, which is very crucial, uh, I will say, and making sure that we can get to the Ugin as well, so pretty happy with that. Um, we do have an issue with just the fact that they've got a pretty flooded board, um, but hopefully we can get there. Uh, let's see. Hmm. Do we actually go for that? Uh, let's try it. It's a bit of the slow roll, um, but I'm kind of happy to do that. Let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So that's going to get us to seven. Uh, we can play Ugin the Ineffable next turn if we would like uh, and get rid of maybe Linden here. Um, this can very happily block these two, so that's perfectly fine. Um, don't care much about them gaining so much life because, again, eventually we outvalue a deck like this. Um, so not tremendously worried about it. Uh, but we do need to get rid of some of these creatures pretty quickly here. Um, and that's a nice way to do it. We can just block. That's totally fine by me. Let's do this. Um, we'll get a forest for obvious reasons. So, uh, now we can do this. Uh, let's do this. Um, and no attacks here. Um, all right. So again, we're just kind of leaving up blockers here. That's perfectly fine. Um, and then hopefully, uh, next turn we can actually do some major damage. Uh, let's see. Sorry, I got a quick text from my lady friend. There we go. All right. I'm all too happy to block this, so that's fine. Uh, they are drawing quite a lot of cards off of this, I will say, but uh, Ugin the Spirit Dragon is really going to take down what they're doing here. Um, just because, you know, this hits all all permanents, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. Uh, so with converted mana cost, three or less is what we are looking at here. So let's do this uh, for three. And it does get rid of our sol or no, excuse me, it doesn't. I, I keep forgetting that that's not at all how that works. Um, I did that uh, in one of the games in the first video, and it actually turned into a bit of an issue for us, but that's okay. Uh, let's go ahead and do this. Uh, and we'll just we'll play out a row. Go ahead and gain a life, uh, gain three life, excuse me, and then put a land down. And now we're just even more set up. We've dealt with their board. They've got some cards in hand for sure but we've certainly got a formidable board going uh that's going to be a little bit challenging for them to get through but we'll see we will see um we also with ugin and the ineffable coming down this coming turn we've got a way very quickly to deal with you know whatever they happen to do um so i feel okay about this um gotta really hope that they can't deal with the uh, spirit dragon here but other than that i think we're in okay shape uh, and this actually is going to work out okay, so we can, well, I'll, I will demonstrate. So we get to play this. Uh, sorry if the frame rates are getting a little choppy here as well. Let's get this out of here. I can gain a life, that's fine. 
then this actually is now able to deal with Daxos, uh, which is great. And then we can do this. I'm untapping an island here because uh, we've used quite a number of our uh, forests already. Uh, I don't want to get into a position where we start losing them due to, you know, any kind of, uh, um, you know, banishing lights or whatever they might have to deal with creatures. I just don't want to have to lose all of our forest uh, to that. Um, next turn, we can actually just get indestructible threats and there's very little they can truly do. Um, here, there's really not much they can do either. So that's pretty good. Um, let's go ahead and do this. Uh, let's go ahead and do this, get this out of the way. Uh, we're just going to go ahead and minus. Um, I know we don't necessarily need to, um, and that's, that's fine, but I do kind of want to get, uh, these indestructible threats down. And of course we've got more Nissas, so I'm not tremendously worried about that. Let's be very honest. Um, and we've got all of the, the stuff we wanted to ramp into already out. So feels pretty good. Let's go ahead and end the turn and see what they do. Um, Got to assume there's not a ton they can do in this position. I mean, worst case scenario, we can still sleep the board and it does not touch our side, uh, which is kind of amazing given, you know, the, the synergies here are just really, really strong in my opinion. Very, very fun. Uh, and I, I absolutely love that about this deck. Um, that's one thing that I've noticed just in playing it with the first few games that the synergies here are better than I even gave them credit for, uh, which is a bit frustrating on my end, but that's fine. Uh, let's do this. Oh, let's see. We'll just plus this up. I mean, it doesn't, it's not going to matter too much here. Um, go ahead and hit that. Uh, we will go ahead and plus up here. Uh, we could have just swept for one and that would have been perfectly fine, but we really didn't need to. Um, we'll play this out. We're at a point now where we're definitely in the driver's seat. Uh, if, I mean, we already were a little bit here, but, uh, we're definitely in a strong position. So that's our last land that we can fetch out basic wise. Uh, and next turn, if we really want to, we could, we could ultimate this if, if we even need to go that far. I think at this point, it's pretty clear the writing on the wall, but that's okay. There we go. We got it. Uh, awesome, awesome, awesome. Feeling good, guys. This deck is really sweet. Uh, okay, we didn't get it. Excuse me. They gained one life. I forgot about that, but, I mean, come on. Uh, can we just... No, we can't. Oh, that's fine. There we go. All right. I was waiting for it. I was just like, come on. This is a little excessive at this point. Um, cool. Hey, black up, back up to platinum one. That's pretty nice. So... Let's jump into game two here. Uh, I'm excited to summarize my thoughts on this one in particular. I think this is a very, very cool deck. Um, one that I know a lot of people were very hyped for because, you know, looking at the current standard before Corset 2021, uh, Simic Ramp was already very good. I mean, we've we've gotten a lot of really good cards for that deck recently. Um, and Corset 2021 is no different. We got quite a number of not only very strong enablers, but very strong bombs, obviously. Um that really, really put this deck over the top. Um, it's a bit of an odd hand, but I'm going to try it. Definitely starting off on the back foot here a little bit, given that we've got only tapped lands. Uh, but Temple of Mystery, really going to help us hopefully hit an untapped land so we can get some of these down. Um, but regardless, I, I think that this deck just got even better, uh, if nothing else. The the fact that we get to run both Ugins, but in particular Ugin the Spirit Dragon. Oh, such a good card. Such a good, good card. Uh, one that, like I said, we haven't seen since Fate Reforged in Standard, but my goodness, is it a strong one. Uh, and we've talked about Power Creep. Power Creep is a very real thing. Now, the Ugin the Spirit Dragon uh, was a card that, uh, it's obviously strong, there's no doubt about that, but it was already printed in Standard from years and years ago, so that's not like a surprise hit to Standard by any means. Um, and it's not necessarily on the back of one particular card that I, I feel it's necessary to talk about power creep, but given the entirety of the set, um, we've just got some very, very strong cards in this set. And I, I don't know if, you know, maybe I'm over evaluating uh, a few of them, which is certainly, you know, a fair assessment. I could very easily be doing that. But overall, this is a very, very strong core set in, in comparison to previous core sets, at least 
uh, from my recent recollection. So um, I don't know. I, I think that this is just a really, really strong set, and it definitely, I think, represents some of that power creep. But hey, I'm fine with strong cards. I think most people are. So uh, it is what it is. Uh, we'll pass. We'll obviously do this on, um, on the uh, end of their turn just to represent, even though we don't necessarily need to. Um, all right, we'll do it now then. Uh, we'll put the temple down. Uh, I'm going to put that on the bottom. Um, I'd kind of like to hit something a little more powerful, to be honest. So that is not it. Um, that's not, I mean, that's not bad, but that's definitely not what we were hoping for. Uh, let's go ahead and drop this for two. Uh, turn five can be very strong for us, depending on what we draw. Wow, three Ugans. <laughs> well, unfortunately, we only need one. Uh, and unfortunately, we can't even play those yet. So we're a little off, but that's okay. That's okay. That's a, a part of the deck. So perfectly, perfectly fine. Uh, Hydroid Crisis, very good here, um, just in general, though, just because it it's going to hold its own. If it needs to trade off with something, we can. That's fine. Um... Uh, mm. we'll do this. I should not have done that first. That was a mistake, uh, but it actually works out. There we go. Get a grazer and we'll drop this. Um, do I attack? Yeah, actually, I think I do. Uh, when it comes to things like this, we can be a bit more aggressive because chances are we're going to be sweeping the board with Ugin uh, at some point. Um, and so... You know, if they want to trade off, that's great. If they don't want to trade off, it's fine. We've got another blocker here, so I'm not tremendously worried about that. And if, you know, if they decide to spend a removal spell on a grazer, like, that's terrible on their end. So, I mean, that just, unfortunately, that's what they may have to do, but that's not a good way to go. So, um, that's fine. We trade off. Uh, if anything, this fills our yard more for uh, an inevitable Uro, uh, hopefully. So, uh, very good. That's what we're looking for. That is exactly what we were looking for. Let's go ahead and get a forest. Um, we won't attack, obviously, um, but it's nice that we can at least block these. Uh, this one for here. Um, next turn, though, uh, given no changes here, we actually do get to drop a uh, Ugin and hopefully start dealing with some of these guys. Uh, sure. That changes things, obviously. Um, they still can attack in and gain a life, but I don't actually know if they do or not. Uh, I assume given that they are a life gain deck, they'd be fine with it, but okay, guess not. Um, hmm. You know what? I'm going to keep a row. Um, I think that's worth keeping, uh, given that we've already got five cards in our graveyard. Uh, and the fact that this just draws us a card and makes it a little easier to to ramp out more Ugin. Um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Uh, one land will do it, uh, but this just gives us, we've got some time here. Let's go ahead and take the opportunity to, to do something a bit different here and get this down. Perfect, can do that. Uh, and now we actually just get to go ahead and play Uro as well, so even better. Uh, granted, we already technically could, um, but this just gives us even more longevity next turn we of course can ugin still that's perfectly fine wow and we get to gain a couple life that's great so let's go ahead and pass here feeling pretty good uh this is definitely an interesting deck though i i've seen a lot of orzov life gain lists uh in particular in our discord channel where people are suggesting lists um a lot of people have been have been doing that wow uh okay that's pretty good um so a lot of people have been talking about that, and I think there's a lot to be said there, but um, I uh, I don't know. I'm really, I'm not sold on which configuration is the best. Uh, okay, so we sweep for, whoop, let me double check. We sweep for three. Cancel first. Wait, I'm doing the thing wrong again, but that's fine. Um, let's go ahead and do this. Uh, technically should not have played this yet. That was a mistake. Uh, I made that mistake in the first video as well, uh, but that's okay. All right, now. There we go. 
Uh, unfortunately, that does exile Uro, um, but that also gets rid of literally everything on their field, which is really crucial considering they have engines on engines going on, uh, specifically with these uh, Griffin Airy. It's a good one. They can just win off of that technically at some point. Um, let's kill that. We could kill both of these, but we don't actually have to really. Uh, let's grow spiral. Okay, uh, let's bond of flourishing. I guess we're taking a land. Um, <laughs> let's do uh, solemn here. Take action, get a forest, uh, and we'll attack, because we can now. Uh, they do get to create little angels here, which is quite good, but again, we get to exile everything with Ugin, so I don't particularly care about that. Um, yeah. Revenge is very good, uh, but really not amazing at the moment. Uh, let's make sure one. Cool. For minus one... We get to exile their board. Seems good. Um, I'm just going to attack him. We do have a long way to go. I mean, I will say that. Um, should we do this? I actually kind of think yes. Um, I'm going to keep this one. I'm just going to go ahead and peg them for three here. Uh, I kind of want to get this to ultimate range as quickly as possible. Um, so I think that that's you know, pretty high priority. That's a card we can easily kill. That's fine. Uh, and that actually just works towards our Ugin even more. So I am perfectly fine. Wow, we have drawn all four Ugins. Uh, that's a little insane. <laughs> I don't think that that's uh, certainly not normal, um, <laughs> but that's fine. Uh, we do have to make sure that this card never sticks on the field. That's a pretty crucial one, uh, especially in tandem with Revenge. Uh, that's very, very good. <clears throat> sure. Um, I'm more than happy, obviously, to start ultimating this. So let's just go ahead and do that. I mean, doesn't hurt at this point. All right. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We'll enter that tapped. That's perfectly fine. Sure. Let's do that. Um, and let's hasten this clock up a little bit here. Go ahead and do this. Um, I'm 100% going to go ahead and do this. <laughs> Just because. It's not really a reason not to. Um, keep this one. Hit him. And attack in. Um, We'll go ahead and do this now. It doesn't tremendously matter, I don't think, but uh, sure, we'll play Uro. Uh, this is just another threat that we get to jump. <laughs> wow, uh, planar wide celebration, huh? Um, yeah, let's do that. Um, let's just do this. I'm just gonna get as much damage on the field as possible, I think. Um, might as well. Get you out. Might as well go ahead and do this. Uh, this does kind of, you know, make our deck a little thinner here, which isn't necessarily great, but I think it'll be all right. Go ahead and do that. This is a heck of a turn, man. Let me tell you. <laughs> um, loving this turn. All right. I'm not going to play that. I'm just going to don't have to don't have to do that. Um, <laughs> that was one heck of a turn. We got to do so much. OK, there we go. I was waiting for it. I figured it was coming. Uh, man, that felt great. Uh, let's go ahead and jump into our last game here. Uh, hopefully this one doesn't last too long because we are at the 20 minute mark. But oh, yeah, apply that now. Let's go ahead and open our pack. Really quick, we're going to do the pack opening and then the uh, mastery tree because we did get a uh, an orb there. Um, Primal Might. Okay, that's cool. 
Mm -mm -mm. I am liking this stack, guys. Simic Ugin. It's pretty sweet. Uh, well, I guess we'll just do green. Why not? Why not? All right. Let's jump in, guys. Last game with Simic Ugin Ramp. Feeling pretty good about this deck uh, overall. Um, again, this was a list submitted to us, I believe, by Spinoraptor or Spinoraptor, but um, the list that we're using is not really super close to his list. Certainly has a lot of options that are similar, but um, we did change some things up, and so I, I'm crediting him with the idea of the list, uh, though we did kind of pull a different one uh, and work with it a little bit to get something a bit different. Our frame rates are garbage, and I do reckon I recognize that, um, but... We're going to try and push through here and hopefully just move fairly quickly so it's not too bad for you guys. Uh, let's go ahead and put this out. Um, I do apologize for the frame rates. I'm trying not to quit out so much because of that because it's just kind of frustrating, I know, for a lot of people. But um, hopefully it's you know not too bad for you. Let's go ahead and do this, get our basic. Uh, we will get a forest. Um, worth noting, forest is much more important than island, assuming you have all the colors you need uh, in this list, mostly because of Nyssa. Um, in fact, entirely because of Nyssa. <laughs> um, that's fine. Don't particularly care about that. Uh, and that's a good card. Uh, let's go ahead and put this out. Uh, let's just go ahead and put Ugin out. Again, we're playing a bit quick here. Um, just to keep things moving forward, hopefully the frame rate issue isn't terrible to watch, but... This just keeps us moving in the right direction. That's fine. Um, we actually just get to kill that if we'd like. So, yeah, really doesn't even hurt that much. Um, let's just go ahead and kill Teferi here. Um, hmm. Let's do this. I know we could get Tamiyo out. Maybe that's the right call. I'm not 100% sure, but um, I don't know. I'm not positive on that. We'll pay two. We'll go ahead and get Solemn out. Solemn is cheapened, obviously, by um, by our Ugin, which is great. Uh, makes it really, really easy to play a lot of this deck. So I like that quite a bit. Um... We're just going to kind of continuously throw some stuff out and see what they do about it. Um, this is more of a control deck, very clearly, um, just based on these two cards, if nothing else, and the Yorian. Um, but uh, a giant Hydroid Crisis might be a problem for them. Uh, and so we're, we're hopefully going to be able to take advantage of that. Uh, let's go ahead and do this. Let's go ahead and do this. And in fact, I think what we'll do is go ahead and lean on that. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We'll do this for seven. Um, and then if they do have a way to deal with it, Tamiya is going to be our way to obviously bring it back here. So this gets it out of burn range for pretty much anything they could have. Um, obviously, yeah, then that's perfectly fine. There's nothing wrong with that. That's our way of, you know... First of all, we get a card back. Thanks, to, man. Ugin the Ineffable is just sweet. Um, but now, you know, we've drawn a bunch of cards. We get to draw another off of the Shatter. And if we want to bring this back uh, with Tamiya, we certainly can. Um, so I'm very, very happy with this. This has a lot of built-in resilience, uh, is what I will say. Uh, let's go ahead and Ugin. <clears throat> um, I'm just going to hit them for three. Uh, I kind of want to see if we can get to ultimate range against this deck. Um, let's do this. Uh, I'm going to return you. Um, and we'll go ahead and do this. Do I have to discard a card? That's fine. We'll get rid of the Grazer. The Grazer is not really doing anything at this point. Um, so I'm not tremendously worried about that. Uh, and now we've got three active Planeswalkers against their deck, which, hey, that's a good one. But um, we certainly have have answers here. And we just get to kill this with Ugin. Oh, and hey, another Ugin. Let's go ahead and get rid of that. Let's go ahead and play second Ugin the uh, Spirit Dragon here. 
They may have a counter or something, but it doesn't look like it. Um, hit them. Uh, let's do this. Um, we actually probably did this out of order. In fact, we definitely did. We should have done this first, um, so we could have gotten... If there was a Nissa, we could have gotten it out, um, but that's okay. Uh, let's play Solemn. And at this point, we're just getting the stuff out of our hand <laughs> more than anything else. Um, sure. Do that. Uh, we'll play a Fabled Passage. We'll play a Grazer. Uh, and at this point, we're just kind of getting stuff out of our hand. Uh, so that way, when we do drop a um, a fairly large Hydroid Crisis, we're, we're in good shape. Uh, let's go ahead and do this. Um, get a forest. And now most of the lands are out of our deck at this point. So that way, hopefully the rest of our draws are fairly solid. Uh, at least that's the idea. Um, but the opponent definitely in a bad position here, having to answer you know, all of the creatures on the board, plus all the planeswalkers, they can Elspeth Conquer's death these, but they can't really deal with all of them at once, uh, unless they have a Storm's Wrath, which does take care of two of them, uh, and worth noting it takes care of two of them, but, um, interesting. So I have not yet played against a Fairy Time Master, this is going to be a first for me, excited about that. Um, don't really know what all they're going to do, though, they've got three cards in hand, Cycle away for a shark. Doesn't seem great. Um, really doesn't seem great. Uh, okay, so we can just hit this for minus four if we would like. First things first, though, we're going to do this and get hopefully get Anissa. Um, let's go ahead and look for one. No. Okay, fair enough. Uh, let's go ahead and play this. Probably should have done that first, but that's fine. Um, I'm just going to do this for... Four. Uh, this is going to get rid of everything on their field, uh, which is very crucial. Uh, they can draw a card and discard. That's fine. Uh, so this ditches all of their stuff, uh, which means their Yorian doesn't have anything to bounce, which is pretty important. Um, we now get to do this. Uh, we can just drop a giant Hydroid Crisis. One, two, uh, let's do this first. Um, we do have to be careful though. We can't really draw too many cards here. Um, one, two, three. Let's just do it for five. I'm being very conservative in this because again, we, we really don't want to draw but so many cards here. That helps increase the clock a little bit, uh, which is great. So let's go ahead and do that. Um, and we'll just, we'll just attack in. Um, Again, I, I'm I'm hesitant to draw too many cards just because they could very easily have answers to what we're doing here. And so we do have to be quite careful. But now we've got something to attack in the air, multiple things to attack on the ground, damage dealers on both ends. Uh, okay, so they get to cheat something out here, though. Worth knowing. Um, they can get a couple tokens and then Luca uh, to get something really nice. I wonder what they're going to get, though. <clears throat> Dream Trawler. Okay. It's a good one. Um, yeah, I was going to say, we can still just, you know, attack. Uh, wow. Okay. I am absolutely loving this. So obviously the big new card here, uh, first of all, the Simic Ramp deck, like we've talked about, it's been around for a while. Uh, we've got a lot of really, really strong Simic Ramp uh, payoff cards as, as well as enablers. Uh, this new core set really brought out just even more of those, uh, which is fantastic. I'm very excited about that. Um, I think it's safe to say Ugin is super, super good as our top end. Uh, both Ugins, I want to mention. Uh, Ugin the Ineffable does a really good job of getting a single permanent off the field and dealing with whatever kind of permanent there is, aside from Colorless, obviously. Um, but it also cheapens the rest of our deck. Uh, and so we can get the Spirit Dragon out, hopefully sweep the board if we need to, and then just start plussing and plussing, and then hopefully get to that ultimate and really, really just start winning the game. Nissa and All-Star, as always, uh, being able to ramp us into our stuff, but also create creatures for us out of our lands. Amazing. Uh, really, this deck is just super, super good. I, I really, really like this one. I would definitely recommend it. Uh, it's not a very fast deck uh, in terms of you're not going to win in three minutes, but... 
Um, it is very, very strong. It, it has some really crazy good top end uh, and a lot of great ways to get there. So I love this deck. Uh, again, I just want to mention to Raptor, I do appreciate the suggestion. I know we went with a slightly different list, but I do appreciate that you pointed this deck out to me. Uh, so that way we could actually get this one up. So thank you. Uh, and uh, I'm going to I'm going to credit you with saying that, you know, this the idea at least was very much yours. So I do appreciate it. Uh, and again, thank you to everybody for submitting decks and watching these videos. I certainly appreciate it. I hope you'll uh, hope you'll stick around. Hope you'll suggest some more decks. Uh, and I'm very excited to jump into more gameplay. So we'll see you guys very, very soon. Thank you so much for watching. And I will see you uh, hopefully in the next gameplay video. Bye, guys.